What's going on YouTube? You already know who it is. Back at it. Brand new video for you guys. You already know what I got to say. Happy Friday! Happy Friday, you guys. Hope you guys are having a good day today. Hope you got a good weekend. And I just want to say, it's a real Sponge's birthday today. Happy birthday, SpongeBob. Okay? Listen, don't judge me. If you guys didn't know, SpongeBob birthday blowout, something like that, coming on tonight, Nickelodeon, 7 o'clock. Be there, all right? So without any further ado, I was requested to check out this video. It's called 10 Actors Who Quit Animated Movie Sequels for Crazy Reasons. I wonder who's going to be on this list. We're going to check it out right now in about a three, two, one. Animated hits like The Lion King Brother and Aladdin Bear. may lead to sequels, but the voices may movie. sound a little off the second time around. Some mm -hmm. of the most famous voice actors have been replaced for a number of reasons, including recasting, death, and money issues. A lot of recasting. See some of the 10 most famous examples. And if you can tell the difference in the replacement voices. You could tell. You could tell. Katy Perry. Katy Perry transitioned from the music stage to the Hollywood vocal booth thanks to a happy accident. While the producers and director were planning the original Smurfs movie, they just happened to use samples of Perry's voice for the character of Smurfette. Once they found out that she was the person behind the voice samples, they reached out and she gladly accepted the role. Perry went all in for two Smurfs films and was even seen dressing on the red carpet as Smurfette for multiple appearances. When a third right. Smurfs movie was announced, fans expected the singer to return, but that was not the case. The third film was a reboot that wiped away the animation and real life hybrid to create something that was all digital. Fellow singer Demi Lovato was chosen for the role of Smurfette and helped make the part come to life. Not only did Lovato take over the role, but Smurfette was the center of the story that sent all of the little blue guys to a lost Smurf world inhabited by females. There's no word yet on a sequel. Uh, it will likely depend on the home video performance. Did she kick him in his little Smurf Village first? Smurfs. Open season. Oh my God. Ashton I, Kutcher I love and that movie Lawrence. and the game. Sony Pictures had sat out of the animation game for too long. Companies like Disney, Pixar, and Illumination were dominating the box office as Sony decided to throw their hat some in. Good -ass the first project that would get released was Open Season. The story follows the tale of a domesticated bear that is forced back into the wild by a goofy mm -hmm. deer. The bear and deer were played by comedic actors Ashton Kutcher and Martin Lawrence. Yes. While the film wasn't a huge success, it was popular enough to It was good sequel, to me. And Sony set off on creating Open Season 2 for a direct-to-video release. Obviously, the contracts for Martin Lawrence and Kutcher were too much for a direct-to-video release. For the sequel, Kutcher was replaced by Joel McHale, and Lawrence was replaced by Mike Epps. Uh -huh. All four actors have very distinct voices, so the change was pretty obvious, especially if you watch them back-to-back. -back. Sony went even cheaper for Open Season 3 by dropping McHale and Epps for two unknown voice actors. A couple of other direct-to-video features have also used other actors playing the same characters. It's pretty safe to say that Kutcher and Lawrence won't be returning to these roles. Obviously. Are they making another one or Joaquin something? Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix doesn't look like the typical family-friendly actor. He usually appears in more adult-oriented and artsy films. Examples of I didn't even know he played her, in this one. Reservation Road, and I'm Still Here. This is why it's surprising that Phoenix would take the lead role in an animated Disney film. Phoenix voiced the role of Kenai, a hunter who accidentally killed a mother bear and then gets transformed into a bear himself. Brother Bear was a pretty entertaining film with it good was. pieces of comedy and a moving story. Yes! But that wasn't compelling enough to have Phoenix stick around for the sequel. The character of Kenai returns in Disney's Brother Bear Kenai. 2, but this time he's voiced by former Grey's Anatomy star Patrick Dempsey. That is one of the only characters that was recast for the movie. Even Rick Moranis, a man who retired from Hollywood, returned to voice one of the Canadian moose. Okay, you guys, I guess we'll... I guess we'll just catch up with those guys later, eh? The director video sequel <laughs> isn't was as funny. deep as the first entry. Maybe that's what drew Phoenix away. Dempsey does a nice job of using his own voice and adding a little of the flair that Phoenix brought to the role. Hey, I'm ready this time. Not now, Slink. I got some bad news. Bad news? <laughs> Jim Varney. The Toy Story franchise is filled with several famous voices. There's <laughs> Tim Allen, Tom Hanks, Joan Cusack, and Michael Keaton, among others. For Toy Story 1 and 2, the lovable character of Slinky Classics. Dog was voiced by Kinetic Actors. I still ain't seen the fourth Barney. one yet. That name may not ring any bells at first, but he's the man simply known as Ernest. Throughout the 80s and 90s, Barney starred in several Ernest films, including Ernest Goes to Camp and Ernest Saves Christmas. He was a great part of the Toy Story franchise, and the only reason he never appeared in the third film was because he passed away. Instead of getting oh, rid of the Slinky that. Dog character, one of Barney's good friends stepped up to the plate. Television actor Blake Clark took over the voice and did the role justice. The Boy Meets World and Home Improvement star has a scratchy voice that's very similar to Barney's. It's hard to tell the difference, and if anything, the Slinky Dog sounds a little older, like the toy has aged. Blake Clark has already been confirmed to return to the role of Slinky Dog for Toy Story 4. The film is scheduled for release in 2019. Just came out, actually. Yeah, I've said too much. 
Jeremy Irons, one of the most Scar. iconic Disney villains of all time, I to be Scar from Mufasa. The Lion King. The evil brother of Mufasa killed his own brother, Y'all gonna see that new Lion King? Simba, and then plotted to take over the whole Pride Lands with a pack of hyenas. Sorry, y'all. YouTube and their damn ads. We're just gonna start from here. Yes, my friend. I am Eduardo Perez. Al Pacino. The next entry on our list is because the actor getting replaced was only hired for the sequel, and his voice was never used for the film. After the massive success of Despicable Me, there was bound to be a sequel, and this one kicked things up a notch. The main villain in the story was a masked man known as El Macho. Al Pacino was originally signed up for the role and recorded all of his lines for the movie. Weeks before the film was set to make its premiere, Al Pacino pulled out of the project over creative differences Ooh. and demanded that his performance be removed from the film. Producers screamed Damn, what happened? and hired Benjamin Bratt for the role. He recorded his lines, fit into the El Macho character nicely, and no one ever got to hear Al Pacino's version of the villain. Despite losing a big name like Pacino, the film went on to be an even bigger hit than the original. It did, though. Ooh. Oh, look away! Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Thanks to this and the spin-off Minions, Despicable Me 3 is set Kristen to Kristen Wiig, you can't summer. go wrong with Benjamin her. Benjamin Bratt does not reprise his role, but familiar voices from actors like Russell Brand, Kristen Wiig, and Steve Carell will be featured Love in the her. movie. What the fuck is this? Reese Witherspoon. After appearing in several live-action films, Reese Witherspoon chose to make oh, a yeah, I've never debut seen that. in the 2009 film I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. The movie had great comedy, a clever plot, and Witherspoon got to play the character of Susan Murphy, a.k.a. Ginormica. The movie huh. was a success Ginormica. and led to several short films that Witherspoon also lent her voice to. When it came time to make a sequel in the form of a TV series, Witherspoon wasn't as committed. Nickelodeon picked up the show and probably could have always commitment her issues show with this for shit. Episodes. Witherspoon was replaced by Ricky Lintone, an actress who has also used her voice for productions like the Lego Batman movie and the SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water. Oh. In recent years, Witherspoon has gone back to the animation world. In 2016, she provided the voice of a singing pig named Rosita in the movie Sing. Sing was a much bigger hit than Monsters vs. Aliens and allowed her I to show that was good. I might have to watch it. Role. After the success of Sing, maybe she'll return for the sequel this time around. Michael J. Fox. I After haven't seen that in a long like ass Aladdin, time. What's it called? Mermaid, Atlantis or something? Disney Animation decided to focus on more adventure oriented films for children in the early 2000s. Along with Dinosaur, Brother Bear, and Treasure Planet, Disney presented a science fiction tale called Atlantis The Lost Empire. The leading actor in the voice cast was Michael J. Fox. Fox played the character of Milo, a scientist that was determined to find Atlantis. I had the, the toy and shit too, like the success. little boat the or whatever you called it. led to a direct -to video sequel entitled Atlantis Milo's Return. Milo may have returned for the film, but Michael J. Fox was nowhere to be found. This, this doesn't make any sense. Fox was replaced by voice actor James Arnold Taylor. Taylor has been known for voicing the animated version of Obi-Wan Kenobi, The Flash, and The Green Arrow for several animation projects. The reason that Fox didn't return for the role is because he was using his voice for the lead role Oh, I Little love Two. Stuart Little, I'm telling y'all. It's pretty safe to say that Stuart Little 2 was a much bigger moneymaker than this direct-to-video Disney sequel. In 2006, Fox used his voice again for another Stuart Little movie, and this one was fully animated. I liked all of them. Stay back. Don't, 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 come, in, don't come any closer. Please, Jane? Don't. Minnie Driver. Minnie Driver has one of the more unique voices in Hollywood. It not only represents her accent from her home in London, but it has a specific sound that stands out whether she's in a live action film or animated production. It's really important. Yep, Along that's with Jane. voice roles in films like South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, and an All Dogs Christmas Carol, one of her most well known voice roles was for Disney's Tarzan. Teddy, mm -hmm. what's all the hullabaloo about? Playing the female lead of Jane, Driver added spunk and depth to Tarzan's love interest. Her natural ability to speak fast and deliver great lines really shined in the great Disney film. Disney followed the success of Tarzan with two sequels. The first sequel, Tarzan 2, was a prequel that featured a younger version of Tarzan before Jane became involved. The second one, entitled Tarzan and Jane, predominantly featured the character and her growing love with the jungle man Tarzan. The production on Tarzan and Jane was as low budget as they come. No this wonder I ain't never seen it. was nowhere to be found on the sequel. It felt more like a hashed together animated TV show pilot than a feature film and really lacked depth without using her voice. The only way I get out of this is if my master wishes me out. Robin Williams. You can't talk about Disney voice roles without mentioning the greatest of all time, Robin Williams' performance as the genie in Aladdin. 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. He was fast talking, sang memorable songs, and delivered one-liners faster than a speeding train. He was the true highlight of the film, and it's hard to imagine what Aladdin would have been like without his casting. Like right. most Disney films, the company looked to cash in and rushed ahead with a sequel entitled The Return of Jafar. Robin Williams did not return to the role after getting into a dispute of the use of his voice for promotional material during the first movie. The replacement for Williams? Homer Simpson. Jerry. 
<laughs> That's right, Dan Castellaneta, a Simpsons voice regular, was hired to replicate the genie's voice. While he did okay, there is no one that could create the same magic that Williams had. Luckily, Disney realized this and were able to hire him back for the second sequel entitled Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Okay, so I've said this before, listen, you have to have, like with certain characters and stuff, you just have to have that umph, you know what I'm saying? That spunk about you because I mean, you know, you could play a certain character, that don't mean it's gonna blow up. Just like they were saying, like, what would, you know, the genie be without Robin Williams? Or who would who would Mufasa be without James Earl Jones? Don't worry, I'll wait. This is a pretty cool little video. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Comment below what's some of your favorite uh, voice actors, if you want to say that. Or just some of your favorite childhood movies from back in the day, now, whatever. And also... Do me a favor, let me know if there's anything I can react to for you guys next. Hit that subscribe button, follow me on my Instagram, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Taylor Rain, I'm out this thing.